Now we have to move on to the next simulations. We also have to animate the pilot so that he gets off the ground. Then, we have to explode the glass ball at the top of the building. Well, before moving on, let's take an overview of the global scene. First of all, we need to simplify the scene. We have to get rid of the simulations and objects we don't need. They are the smoke simulation, the debris and building pieces, and the dynamic paint simulation of the ground. So, let's get started on the file we're working on. Open the modifier panel and apply the effect to the piece of ground where we applied the dynamic paint effect. In this way, the grooves on the ground become a real mesh, which means they are no longer a simulation but a static object. We also need to get rid of the building pieces that fell down after the collision with the spaceship. So, let's go ahead and delete all of the pieces that were destroyed. Well, you can also see that I added these objects to my scene. They represent the pools that will be used later in the water simulation. They are simply cylinders that will be filled with water. But we'll get to that later. I also added a particle system to the building's floor. It's basically the same as the particle system with the rocks I added to the planet's surface. Next, we must remove the simulation of the rocks created by the spaceship's impact with the ground. As a result, we must convert a particle system into real objects. To do so, select the source of one of the particle systems, navigate to the Modifier tab, and click the Make Instances Real button. As we can see here, each particle becomes a real object in this manner. I also moved all the objects in a collection to keep the project clean and organized. Select all of the objects, then press the M button to make a new collection. Let's go through the same steps for all of the particle system sources. As a final step, we must remove these sources. Otherwise, we'll have the particle system as well as the objects it generates. Well, we now have a scene that contains no simulations and only static objects. This is great, because Blender does not need to compute anything. So we have a clean scene in which to begin adding our new simulation, the glass ball explosion. I forgot to mention that we must delete the original objects that were used to create the dynamic paint simulation. We must also discard the spaceship's animation and keep only the last position when it stops on the ground. Let's select each piece of the spaceship, move it after the last keyframe in the timeline, and delete everything before it. Let's do the same for the empty object that was used to animate the spaceship's rotation. In this way, we also froze the spaceship's position. But we're not done yet. Finally, we must remove the displacement animation that we added to the spaceship. As previously stated, we simply need to open the related modifier and click the Apply button. We also created an animation in the object's material to animate the dirt and imperfections on the surface. So, select the Multiply nodes and delete the keyframes associated with them.
Well, we actually finished. And now we have a clean scene to work with. As a final step, we must remove the scene's heaviest simulation, the smoke one. I had forgotten to do so previously. As a first step, select and delete the smoke domain. Then, let's get rid of the smoke source and the collision object. And this is the manual process of physically removing what we no longer require. However, in many cases, we have many objects, materials, references, and so on, that are stored in the scene, even though they are no longer used. The best way to get rid of unused items is to use the action, clean up, and use data blocks. And, as you can see, there are numerous items that can be removed. By opening the Orphan Data view, we can see the unused items in a different way. When we create things like actions, textures, brushes, and so on, they are automatically assigned to the object or item to which they belong. However, when the associated object is deleted, all dependencies are retained in memory. They appear as orphan data because they are no longer associated with any object. The zero number on the right indicates that there are no active associations for the item. As a result, when we delete the orphan data block, we remove all of these items. We can now proceed with the pilot animation. Now we must figure out how to animate the pilot. This animation was not created from scratch because this course is not about character animation. To accomplish this, I used Mixamo's animation presets. Mixamo is an Adobe website where you can find a variety of character and related animations. You should subscribe to use it for free. First, choose your favorite character. You can select the animation you require in the Animations tab. Two animations are required in our scene. The pilot who leaves the ground is the first. The second is when he takes a look around. Well. So, by typing Stand Up, we can search and filter for the first animation. We have a large selection of animations to choose from. Some of the parameters can also be changed. The distance between legs is something that is frequently useful. The character can be downloaded once everything is OK. I recommend the FBX file format. Now, launch Blender and import the FBX file. Here we have the armature, which is the main structure that controls the character's animation. Select it and move where we want to stay. You can also see all of the keyframes associated with the armature in the timeline. Check that it is properly placed on the floor with the feet in contact with it. But now we must add the second animation. And we'd like to combine the animation with this one. So, let's start by looking for and downloading an animation in which the character looks around. Import the entire character into Blender again. 
It is renamed Armature 001 automatically. As before, move the character close to the first one to check the animation. Well. However, I do not want two characters. I'd like to copy the animation from the second character to the first. And the second animation must be added after the first. Blender's animations are stored in the animation section. It represents the animation associated with this specific object. In the action editor inside the dope sheet, you can see the related keyframes. And this is the same action name as in the view layer on the right. We can also rename the action to something more meaningful. Remember that Blender creates an associated action for every animation you create. Okay, but the action is currently, as you might expect, a series of keyframes. The interesting thing is that we can transform this keyframe sequence into something that we can use again and again, as well as in other objects. Essentially, we can turn this keyframe sequence into an item that can be used wherever we want. In order to do that, we also have to consider another editor in Blender, specifically that nonlinear editor. The nonlinear editor is where we can add, modify, and mix various actions. It's a great place to get the most out of our animations. The good news is that we can apply an animation we take from one object to another. But first, I must convert the animation I want to transfer or reuse into an action. So we return to the action editor, select the keyframe sequence we want, and click the push down button. The keyframe sequence disappears as we do this, and we have a new item in the nonlinear editor with the same name as the original action. Essentially, we have converted an action composed of a series of keyframes into a single item that represents the entire animation. Consider this as converting the animation into a container that you can use wherever and whenever you want. We can manipulate the entire animation as a single item in this manner, which is more practical than manipulating the keyframe sequence. We can move, resize, or duplicate it. Well, let us return to our original requirement of transferring the animation of the second character to the first. So, for the second character, let's do the same. Rename the look around action and then click the push down button to turn it into a reusable item. Of course, in the nonlinear editor, this action is associated with the second character. But now I can select the first character and add another action, selecting the newly created action, which is the pilot looking around. Excellent work! After the first animation, our first character now has a second one. However, keep in mind that this was possible because the two characters share the same armature and thus have the same references in the bones animation. You couldn't do that if your armatures were different. We can also remove the second character because we no longer require it. The final step is to combine the two animations to create a smooth transition. Currently, the two animations begin and end in different places. We can accomplish this by selecting the two actions and then adding a transition from the Add menu. The two animations are now gradually merging. We can also change the timing of the animations by dragging them around on the timeline. We can now move on to the next simulation, which is the glass ball explosion.